Hi, this is Miss Townsend and I love math. Welcome to Math with Townsend. This is the Grade 9 Analytic Geometry Summative, question number 10. Here we go. So the question says that the equations px plus 2y equals 5 and 3x plus qy equals 20 represent the same straight line. Find p and q. Well, they certainly don't look like the same line, but we're told that they're the same line. So obviously there's some work we have to do. Let's look more carefully at the lines. We'll call this one line one. So line one has P, and we don't know what P is. It's some number, and our job is to figure out what number it's supposed to be. Six, negative 12, 1,000, I don't know. Uh, we'll call this one line two. Line two has a Q in it. So the same idea. Q represents some unknown number, 17, 38, square root pi. We're supposed to figure out what the value of Q is in order to make sure that this statement is a true statement, the same straight line. So what does it mean if L1 and L2 are the same? Well, obviously it means that every single point on the line is the same point. Um, well, what else is the same? Well, you know how much we like to talk about slopes. So I think it's important to say that the slopes are the same. Obviously, if they're the same line, they have the same slope. But we can't just say that because having the same slope simply means that lines are parallel. We have to make sure we talk about something else. So again, every single point is the same, including my favorite point, which is the y-intercept. So they have the same slope and the same y-intercept. And why do you think I'm talking about those things in particular? Well, because normally when we talk about a line, we like to put our lines into what we call slope-intercept form. And slope-intercept form lets us see the slope and see the y-intercept. So if I could see the slope of line 1 and line 2, I could make sure that they were the same. And if I could see the y-intercept of line 1 and line 2, I could make sure they were the same. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to rearrange our lines into slope-intercept form, and then we can see how to make them the same. So starting with line 1, line 1 says px plus 2y equals 5, and I want it in this form, y equals. So I'm going to isolate the y term, which means subtract px from both sides. That's a subtract. Divide everything by 2. So there's line one. I have a slope of negative p over two and a y-intercept of five over two. So let's um, let's copy that information onto a new screen. So line one has a slope of negative p over two and a y-intercept of five over two. So there it is, that's line one. Now we need to do the same thing for line two. So line two looks like this. 3x plus qy equals 20. And again, I need to isolate the y term. And now I need to divide by q. And I know that probably seems weird, but remember q is just a number. So I'm just going to divide by q. Hoping, of course, that Q doesn't end up being zero because then I'd be breaking some sort of fundamental rule here. But let's pretend. So there's line two. Slope is negative three over Q. Y-intercept is 20 over Q. So let's copy that on this page. So line two has a slope of negative three over Q and a y-intercept of 20 over q. So again, pardon the fact that it's so messy. This slope and this slope are supposed to be the same. We're told that they're the same lines, which means they have to have the same slope. They don't look the same, but that's why we have to figure out what p and q have to be to make them the same. Same thing with the y-intercepts. 
they have to be the same. They don't look the same, but we have to make them the same. So let's start with the y-intercepts. And I want to start with the y-intercepts because the y-intercept only has q. There's no p in it. So there's only one variable. So if the y-intercepts have to be the same, then that means that the y-intercept of the first line must equal the y-intercept of the second line, right? So here's the y-intercept, and here's the y-intercept. And if it's the same line, then they must be the same value. So I'm going to try to solve for q. So first, we're going to multiply everything by 2 to get rid of that fraction. Then we're going to multiply everything by q to get rid of that fraction. And I have this equation. Solving for q, I'm going to divide both sides by 5. And I'm left with q equals 8. So that's the value of q. And now, if we go back to that other question, now I know what number goes right here. It was supposed to be 8. So now we have enough information to look at the slopes. So let's do that. So the slope of line number 1 was negative p over 2. And the slope of the other one, let me double check, is negative 3 over q, but we now know it's actually negative 3 over 8. So solve for p. I'm going to multiply both sides by 8. So negative 8p over 2 equals negative 3. This reduces to negative 4p. Divide everything by negative 4. And I get p equals 3 over 4. So there's p. There's q. And if we go back to the beginning, that's what I had to find. Find the values of p and q. And I did.